Evo. Evo to all of you. For those of you that are newer, there's some that are not at all new, but there's some that are on the newer side in some three weeks? Three weeks? <clears throat> Do you know who are the six Goswamis that you've seen or heard on the image on the screen, the six Goswamis? Should I give a little background? Great. That's a good start. That's good. So let's, let's start there. If you know Lord Chaitanya, everyone else knows Lord Chaitanya. Okay, that's our starting point. Huh? Ladies from Hong Kong. She doesn't know? You don't know? You know who is Krishna? Yes. And your friend, you know who is Krishna? Good. Me too. <laughs> According to the scriptures, Krishna appears in this world, in this created realm, once and every day of Brahma. And a, a day of Brahma is a really a lot of zeros. Many, 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 long, 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 long. And Lord and Krishna comes to do two main things. To give protection to the devotees and to diminish the influence of demoniac demons, terrorists, you know, like global terrorists, global, intergalactic inter terrorists. And he, you know, he does a good job. And he gives teachings that give protection and shelter for the devotees, like Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita? Okay, good. Just, you know, Bhagavad Gita. The very next, in the yoga cycles, I'm not going to go to go too far back. Summer, fall, winter, spring. Four seasons. This is winter. And then, the, the, as the seasons cycle, ages of mankind also cycle. Time, time energy moves matter. Time is not just like, you know, tick, 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 tick. It's an energy of Krishna, and it moves matter, and it moves in cycles, the wheel of time. You have that concept in China, the wheel of time? No. no. Probably. Probably. Okay. You're not in touch with Chinese culture so much, huh? Okay. Okay. Wheel of Time. So, after Krishna departs, his, his concluding teaching in Bhagavad Gita is, it's a nice Sanskrit verse, I'll say the Sanskrit verse, you don't have to know the meaning. Sarvadharmam parijaja mamekan sharanam praja aham tvam sarva pape bhyo moksha yashami masuchaha You know the verse? No? You know the verse? You know the verse? Oh. Let's, let's learn the verse. Sarva dharmam prityaja mamikam sharanam praja aham tvam sarva pape bhyo moksha you know what moksha is? Moksha is liberation. Right? Moksha yashami ma suchaha. So the concluding instruction that Krishna gives in Bhagavad Gita is all other principles that lead to elevation are secondary to one thing. And that one thing is take shelter of me. 
and you take shelter of me, squeaky clean. All your karmas and all reactions to past mistakes and misdeeds and bad stuff, everything gets cleaned by this one thing. Krishna gave his teaching. Krishna performed wonderful pastimes. Krishna returned to the spiritual world. I mean, he did many things, but he returned to the spiritual world. He continued in his pastime through different parts of the universe. Krishna departed with that principal teaching. The very next, the very next cycle of time was this age. And Krishna considered, I gave this nice teaching, but in this dark age of Kali, the present age of quarrel and hypocrisy, people aren't going to understand how to do that. So I could send somebody, but I'll come myself and teach how to do that. So he did. Krishna came in the mood of a devotee of Krishna to teach how to take shelter of Krishna. And that's who Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is. Right? That's who Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is. He's Krishna himself in the mood of a devotee of Krishna to teach how to, how to take full shelter of Krishna. And he taught it primarily through his conduct, his achar, his behavior. And he didn't write books. Many times great personalities come and they write books so they give their teachings. He didn't. He gave his teachings to these six and many, many, many others, but specifically, we'll hear tonight and tomorrow, specifically about Sanatana and Rupa Goswami. He, he instructed them in the science of how to take shelter of Krishna through devotional service. And then he instructed them to write books and he empowered them to write the books and to understand everything that they were writing. We'll, we'll hear as we go along. So this visit is a discussion about these six. Th these six, background-wise, they were highly learned, highly elevated, amazing personalities, even before they met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then he, they became empowered persons to do what they did, to, to show, by, by their example, but also by their teachings. He instructed them to do so, and he empowered them to do so. And they did it. And there are many, 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 many very elevated literatures that represent the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. And then there's the life of Lord Chaitanya. So the life and the teachings of Lord Chaitanya are both very important, and we're going to be getting the, the teachings part, not in detail, but the lives of those who gave those teachings primarily. That's what this visit is about, the six Goswamis. Go Swami means the controller of the senses. Go means cow, when it di different, it, and it also means senses. One who can control one's senses is Goswami. And they were not, they're able to control their senses because they were fixed in this how to part, how to take shelter. And everything else is secondary. And they lived their lives that way and they gave teachings like that. So here they, it shows they're, they're dressed in very simple loincloth and depending upon the season, of course, just a very light cloth around their shoulders. And they, they all have 
these bead bags in their right hand because they did lots of chanting and they did lots of writing in the background. Maybe you noticed in the background, besides some trees, there's Govardhan Hill because they're in Vrindavan. And they would gather together on a regular basis and discuss topics about Krishna and then share some of their writing and so forth and so on. And of these six, there are two principal ones this evening and tomorrow. We're going to be discussing these two, starting with the elder of the two. They're brothers, born in a very elevated family, but became more than elevated by association with Lord Chaitanya. There's a book called Gorogona Deshtipika. There it mentions the author. And this Gorogona Deshtipika is, in, in simple language, it's a who's who. In Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, who is this person in Krishna's pastimes? Just as Krishna in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes is Lord Chaitanya, Krishna had a brother named Balaram. Yes? No. Yes? I'm looking at our two Chinese friends. No. No. Krishna had a brother. His name was Balaram. In the temple, there's a deity of Krishna Balaram. You've seen? Okay. So Krishna is dark complexion. Balaram is white like camphor or like snow or like cotton. White, white. Krishna had a brother, Balaram. Balaram appeared in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes as Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda. His business, his, his, his happiness was giving Lord Chaitanya to others. Whatever Lord Chaitanya wanted, he, he was ready to do what Lord Chaitanya wanted. That was his love for Lord Chaitanya. And so similarly, every one of Lord Chaitanya's associates have their spiritual counterpart in Krishna's pastimes, or the other way. Everyone in Krishna's pastimes has their counterpart in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. So this book, Gona, Gona Deshtipika, is in Krishna's pastimes, who is that person in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes? So, do you know who is Radharani? Or two, okay. You you saw on the altar there's Krishna Balaram, and there's another altar in the center is Krishna, and by his side is Radharani. Radharani is an expansion, or is a manifestation of Krishna's pleasure potency. Radharani is a manifestation of Krishna's pleasure potency. And Radharani has many, many expansions to assist her in her loving pastimes with Krishna. Those expansions of her are called manjaris. Well, they're called gopis, and then the gopis have their expansions called manjaris. So one of those is rupa manjari. It's a little difficult to have people that it's have to... Anyway, it's okay. That's okay. Rupa Manjari in Lord Chita is, is an intimate associate of Radharani. So Radharani's thing, her, her, her existence is the pleasure of Krishna. She's the pleasure potency of Krishna. Her everything is the pleasure of Krishna. And her expansions are assisting her in giving pleasure to Krishna. One of those expansions of her is Rupa Manjari. Rupa Manjari 
we'll hear this again tomorrow morning. So if you didn't get it t- tonight, you'll get it tomorrow morning. Rupa Manjari in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes is Rupa Goswami of those six. And then we saw there's these two. So one of them is in Krishna's pastimes is Rupa Manjari, who is assisting everything. Her, her life is to give happiness to Radharani, to give happiness to Krishna. That's Rupa Manjari. And Rupa Manjari's closest friend is Rati Manjari. And sometimes identified as Lavanga Manjari. And those Manjaris, Rati and Lavanga Manjari, appeared as Sanatan Goswami. We're, this evening we're discussing Sanatan Goswami. Because Sanatan Goswami is the elder of these two elder brother, younger brother. Younger brother is Rupa, the elder brother is Sanatana. Rupa and Sanatana, very important persons in our life of devotion to Krishna. And it is said that Sanatana Goswami is a personal extension of the body of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, a personal extension of the body of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's pretty special. Sadhya Gorabhina Tanu. Tanu means body. And so he's not he's an, he's a personal extension of the body of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he's a very important person. And we're discussing his life this evening. Here's a photograph of our founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada and one of his literary contributions was making a translation of Chaitanya about Lord Chaitanya and his teachings. So here's an excerpt from Prabhupada's writing from the purport. Anyone desiring to become expert in the service of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna should always aspire to be under the guidance of Srupnama Goswami, Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, and Raghunath Das Goswami. To come under the protection of the Goswamis, one must get the mercy and grace of Nityananda Prabhu. We're going to see this again tomorrow morning. You're going to see a nice painting of Lord Nityananda because he gives Krishna or he gives Lord Chaitanya. It's a nice Sanskrit term that explains that. You see in this list of personalities to take shelter of the, one of the names boys. One of the names is Raghunath Das Goswami. You see in that list? Raghunath Das, just second from the bottom. Raghunath Das. So he's one of the six Goswamis. And one of his writings is Manashiksha. It's a very wonderful book. And he also speaks of the importance, the necessity of taking shelter of Rupa and Sanatan. Here's text six from Mana Shiksha. Listen, O mind. Shiksha means instruction. Mana means mind. Instructions to the mind. Listen, O mind. If you desire in every birth to reside in the land of Braja with loving attachment to the servant to serve the youthful couple Sri Sri Radha Krishna in close proximity, then Clearly, remember and offer obeisances to Sri Sarup, Sri Rupa, one of the Goswamis, and his associates in Vrindavan, and to Sri Rupa's elder brother, Sri Sanatana. So this there's multiple references to the importance of doing what we're doing right now, hearing about and remembering and taking shelter of these important persons. In fact, the whole week visiting Galatia was on that topic. Here's another reference. So here's the same Raghunath Das Goswami. Raghunath Das Goswami. From childhood was renounced. From childhood. 
He had no interest in anything material from childhood. His father, Raghunath Das's father, was one of the wealthiest people in the whole of the country. And he was the only son, and by law, he was to inherit all the property of his father. He had no interest in any of it, much to the disturbance of the mind of his father. He just had no interest in it. So Raghunath Das describes Sanatana Goswami in a prayer. One of his books mentions the name of the book, Vilapa Kusha Manjali, verse 6. And he says about Sanatana Goswami how he feels indebted to him. And he says this way, I was unwilling to drink the nectar of devotional service possessed of renunciation. Now he was engaged in devotional service possessed of renunciation. But he's speaking with humility. I had no interest in it. I was unwilling to drink the nectar. But Sanatana Goswami, out of his causeless mercy, made me drink it. Even though I was otherwise able, unable to do so. Therefore, he is an ocean of mercy. You see in red letters, para dukkha dukhi. Para dukkha, dukkha means distress or sadness. Para dukkha dukhi. He is the ocean of mercy for a distressed person like me. He is very compassionate to fallen souls like me. And thus, it is my duty to offer my respectful obeisances unto his lotus feet. So this is one of the six Goswamis, Raghunath Das Goswami, looking up to Sanatan Goswami saying, I'm absolutely indebted to him because he, he brought me to the place where I was unwilling to go and taste the nectar of devotional service in renunciation. Further, Sri Sanatan Goswami Prabhu the teacher of the science of devotional service, wrote several books, of which Brihat Bhagavatamrita is very famous. This is commentary, by the way. Anyone who wants to know about the subject matter of devotees, devotional service, and Krishna must read this book. So some of you have probably read this book. Some of you may be waiting, put it on your book list to read this book. It's a very nice book. It's a very elevated book. He not only wrote the book, he wrote verse-by-verse verse commentary on the book. And he's giving the, the big picture. And then he does it again. The big picture of de devotees, devotional service, and Krishna. It's really an amazing book. And he's the author. So that we just read is Prabhupada's commentary on this statement by Raghunath Das Goswami. Here's something Lord Chaitanya said about Sanatan Goswami. Sanatan Goswami's renunciation of material connections is just like yours. He's speaking to a very renounced person. Ramananda, and very elevated person, Ramananda Roy. Humility, renunciation, and excellent learning exist in him simultaneously. I empowered both of these brothers to go to Vrindavan and expand the literature of bhakti. Both of these brothers means Rupa and Sanatan. We're still on the same topic. Rupa and Sanatan Goswami. And Lord Chaitanya is glorifying them. Starting with Sanatan Goswami because there was some exchange between Ramananda Roy and Sanatana Goswami, and Ramananda Roy was taken aback by the degree of renunciation and the elevated character of Sanatana Goswami. He said, it's, that's, just the, that's the kind of person he is. Excellent in learning, simultaneously excellent in humility, because we find many people who are excellent in learning they're not the most humble people around. Sometimes we find that. Not always, but usually. 
and very renounced. We're going to hear some further glorifications. of This is just giving like the landscape of what his character is. So this celebrated book that we just mentioned, there's the cover of part one. And in addition to writing the book, he wrote the commentary on the book, verse by verse by verse by verse by verse. And another book that's attributed to him, there's some detail, but I won't go into the detail because of the circumstance. Hari Bhakti Vilas is a publication that he was had a major role in putting together. Hari Bhakti Vilas, keeping it simple, it's a how-to manual. How to, how to observe Dhamma Dharastaka, how to observe the month of Kartik, how to observe Janmashtami, how to perform weddings, how to do deity worship, how to, how to anything, anything that's the life of a Vaishnava, it's a how-to manual with lots of scriptural references to support the how-to part. Hari Bhakti Vilas. He gave a commentary on just the 10th canto of the Bhagavatam. Now take note, later we're going to hear, he had the commentary he wrote on the 10th canto, he gave to Jiva Goswami to edit one of the other six Goswamis. Jiva Goswami did that, and he wrote a commentary on his commentary on the 10th canto. He then, he liked Srimad Bhagavatam a lot, we'll hear, from, from his childhood, before he met Lord Chaitanya. He liked, he loved, he was trained in Srimad Bhagavatam. We'll hear some more of how that training went on. The, the Vrindavan pastimes, the Vrindavan pastimes is the first part of Krishna's life in the first part of the 10th canto, and he wrote a poetic summary. We know it as Krishna Lila Stava. It has another name, but it's the same book. He liked Srimad Bhagavatam. He liked Krishna. He liked Krishna in Vrindavan especially. And another book is Dhammadarastaka and Kartik Mahatmya. So those of you, were you two ladies, were you here with us during the last week or so? Did you just arrive? When did you come? Oh. Okay. Okay. So this is like, you're going for a ride, huh? <laughs> lots of information, lots of names. I'm trying to keep it in essences and not so much on the names. You know, the spirit of the person and the, 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 what's going on here. So this past month, did you notice it's a full moon yesterday? So for the whole month, from one full moon to this full moon, is a special, special, triple special month. And there's some, some special, 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 special activities we do during this special, special, special month. And we honor a pastime of Krishna being bound around the waist by a rope from his mother. A love, a loving exchange of mother and the small boy who was being naughty. And she couldn't bind him. And it was like it's a whole, so there's some, some prayers, eight prayers. There's this Ashtaka, Damadar. Damo means rope. And Udara means his waist. So she bound Damodar around the waist, a little boy. And it wouldn't go around him, it wouldn't go around him. She got more rope, 150 feet of rope, it wouldn't go around him. And she was bewildered. And then he allowed her to t bind him. It's a loving pastime. It's a loving exchange. Krishna was showing his opulence she was showing her love, 
and he subordinated his opulence to her love. And she bound him with her love. That's so we celebrate that passing for the whole month. Remember it and sing this nice song and offer a lamp and remember the, the love of Mother DeSoto. You know, anyway, many nice things to say. But he wrote a book about it. And he wrote a book about the whole month. Because it's a special, special, triple special month. That's mo the primary literary contributions. They did many other things we'll hear as we go along this evening. On the upper left corner is a painting of a previous teacher or acharya in our line of disciplic succession. He lived in the late 1800s. And he said the same thing as we heard. Here's from his writings. You should remember Srila Kavi Karnapur and all his family members who are sincere servants of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You should also remember the father of Kavi Karnapur. Always remember all those Vaishnavas who strictly follow the path of Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami. And who are absorbed in bhajan. Bhajan means activities of devotion, of loving service activities. Just like what you did what you were, when we when you came in, when I came in, this young girl was singing very nicely. It's called bhajan. If you actually want residence in the land of Braja, Braja is Krishna's place. Then you must remember all the Vaishnavas who are the followers of Srila Rupa Goswami. So here's a nice painting of Sanatana Goswami. He's got his nice bead bag on his right hand. He's chanting Krishna's name that way. In the back is a little cottage where he would stay. And in front of him is a little something to write on in case he became inspired to write something in glorification of Krishna. He lived solitary. He was a re re renounced person. We heard this already, so I'm not going to repeat it, except it says, Sanatana Kumar, the jewel among the sages, also entered the body of Sanatana Goswami. So these two, Ratimandri, Labangamandri, in Krishna Leela, they appeared in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. There's the emblem of humility. This is from another book, Bhakti Ratnakar. And in this other Chaitanya Charitamrita through Sanatana, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught the articles of faith in devotional service. Now I'm going to say a couple of things for people that have been around more than 24 hours <laughs> or three weeks. But you, you may be interested in this. They're, 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 uh, the teachings of devotional service have three stages or compartments or divisions of study. One is to understand all things in relation to the source of all things. There's a nice Sanskrit term, sambandha, all things and their relationship with the source. So Sanatana Goswami wrote teachings on that. Then there's acting within that relationship of all things with the source. If you're a spirit soul, you can act in your relationship with the source. Rupa Goswami wrote about that devotional service, or this word bhajan that you saw before. You know, activities of acting in your relationship. And then there's, when that matures, what is that? It's like the fruit of acting in relationship. If the fruit in the most mature stage is love, a loving relationship that comes from 
one, two, three, knowing the relationship, acting in the relationship, achieving the mature stage of that relationship. So there's teachings in relation to all three things. And Sanatan Goswami, who's pictured here, he was especially excellent in describing the articles of faith, that is, the, the foundational principles of devotional service. Here's the two brothers again, Rupa and Sanatan. And when Sanatan was young, before he met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he had a teacher. He had had some service, and he had a teacher. His teacher, Vidya Vachaspati. Vidya Vachaspati. Vidya means knowledge. Vachaspati. He's a very learned scholar in the science of ancient Vedic texts, the wisdom literature of India. So he was the leading scholar in all the land at that time. And from time to time, he would come and stay in the same place where Sanatana Goswami and Rupa Goswami lived as young men. And Sanatana Goswami studied the scriptures, and especially, especially liked Srimad Bhagavatam. So he learned Srimad Bhagavatam from the get-go, from the, the, the best scholar in the country. And he had a lot of faith in, in and devotion to his teacher. This is this book, for those of you that have been around a little bit, Bhakti Ratnakar. Bhakti Ratnakar is a is a one way of describing it is is a description of the associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu after Lord Chaitanya's departure. Because there's another literature is what Lord Chaitanya did during his lifetime. And then some of his associates after his lifetime, what did they do? It's an uh, authorized or recognized, very authentic literature. And so part of that book is describing Sanatan Goswami's early life. So we, we, we're just, so far we've heard about his scholarship from his youth and uh, a little bit more about his activity, but one of the very special things he's known about is his relationship with the deity Madan Mohan. There's a nice painting where he's giving, putting in his deity's hand, uh, some very interesting item. It's called the bati. Bati is just th two things. Flour and water mixed together, make it into a ball, put the ball into the fire, the, 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 it, it bakes. You break off the burnt part, and what's left inside is bati. Because he was a mendicant, he didn't have anything elaborate. That's what he offered. He, the painting is showing, he's making that offering. His deity is reaching out his right hand, saying, Thank you very much. There are um, five particular activities that are most beneficial for advancement in spiritual life. And here's the list. Sadhu Sangha, Nam, Nama Kirtan, Bhagavat Shravan. Bhagavat Shravan means hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam. Shravan, Shravana means to hear. Bhagavat Shravan, that's the first line. Associating with devotees, chanting the holy name, and hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. Mathura Vas, living in Mathura, the land of Krishna in Vrindavan. And then worship, worshiping the deity, Sri Murtiya, Murtira, Shraddhaya Sevan, with faith and veneration. So he, he did that. He did all those things, Sanatana Goswami. And one of the things that he's particularly known for among his erudition is his worship of the Radha Madan Mohan deity. Here's the verse. Those of you that know the verse, you can say it with me. 
Boys, put the phone away. Thank you. Okay. Let's say the verse. Look at the screen. Do you know the verse? Let's say it. Everyone can say it together. Jayatam sarato pangor mama manda mater gati mat sarvasva padam bojo radha madana mohano Translation. Glory to the all-merciful Sri Radha and Madan Mohan. They, that's in the picture here, the painting, I mean not the painting, the photo. They are the only shelter of my depraved and crippled self. Their lotus feet are the be-all and end-all of my life. On the left side, it shows Sanatan Goswami writing, and over to his left is the deity Madan Mohan. And the deity of Madan Mohan was established in a temple on top of a hill. Tila means hill. And Dvadasha is um, the, the strength of 12 sons. Aditya, Tila. This is a pastime. This, this hill got its name because many of you know. This is just a pastime. Krishna was engaged in pastime with Kaliya. You know who's the Kaliya? Huh? Okay. So Krishna was engaged in a pastime with Kaliya, who was a serpent with many heads. And after it looked like Kaliya was going to crush Krishna with his coils, Krishna slipped out of his coils and started dancing on his hoods. And everyone was amazed at his dancing skill, dancing on all the hoods of the Kaliya serpent. And as he was dancing, because he's the supreme person, his hoods got crushed and crushed and crushed and crushed. And he became eventually purified by the touch of Krishna's feet. He offered nice prayers. Krishna said, okay, now that you're purified, you can go back to where you came from, now that you're purified. Now Krishna had been, this, the, the, the Leela says, Krishna had been in the water for the whole day. He was cold. He wanted to get warm. So he went to a nearby hill, not far from that place. Have you been to Vrindavan? One day, right? Good. Not far from where the Kaliya Leela took place, just down a little bit, is this hill. So Krishna requested the sun to come and warm him. So with the light of 12 suns, he got warmed up on top of that tila or the hill. So it's since then it's Dvadasha Aditya Tila. So that's where he, Sanatana Goswami, resided. Now this is just a painting of the temple of Madan Mohan and on top of that hill, and here's a British period of a, a drawing a sketch of the place, the on top of the hill. And it's in this place that Sanatana Goswami worshipped Madan Mohan. We'll hear the story brief because it's already 22 after 7 and taking longer. So when he first went to Vrindavan, he was not yet 30 years of age. Still a young man. And he remained in Vrindavan for more than 40 years. So he was a little over 70 when he left this world. But we'll hear a little description of how he became the worshipper of this deity, Madan Mohan. It's just a painting, but there's the, you'll see photographs of the actual deity. So when he was young, he, by circumstance, his father and his grandfather were engaged in government service. So he then took on that service just by 
having it being, again, he was most qualified. In fact, he got upgraded a few notches because he was so qualified. And he became essentially the prime minister of like a quarter of India, today's India. That's, you know, he had big responsibility underneath a, a ruling Muslim king, the Nawab. And the place where the king ruled or where he lived was in Ramakeli. And because he had this devotion to Krishna from this teaching of his teacher, he established, he and his brother Rupa, established a, a, a Vrindavan-like garden and facilities and Govardhan Hill. And, you know, they, so they could remember Krishna although they weren't in Vrindavan. They created a second Vrindavan in their place of residence. In fact, when he was still a young man, still living in Ramakeli, he worshipped a deity, Madan Mohan. There's the deities. And he, they called it Gupta Vrindavan. Gupta means hidden. Ramakali isn't where Vrindavan is, but they live that way. And here's a photograph of the building where he had his office, like the prime minister's office. And his brother, Rupa Goswami, also had a government service. It differs different rend renderings, finance minister and chief minister, etc. So they had, on the one hand, they had deep devotion to Krishna even before they met Lord Chaitanya. On the other hand, they had this conflicting service of being in the service of a ruler that was far from being devoted man. He was a he was a cruel ruler. There's different descriptions. I'll just I'll give one of those different descriptions. The Nawab who was the government ruler of the um, ruling group of Muslim kings, he uh, met with both of them and said, you're very skilled, and I know that you're very devoted to Krishna. You're very skilled in administrative duties, and you're very devoted to Krishna. So I give you a choice, either or. Either you assist me in my government duties, which is my preference, or if you decline, then I'll torture all the devotees of Krishna in my country. Think about it. Tell me what you'd like to do. They didn't want to be in the government service, but they didn't want to see the devotees being tortured because the guy was cruel and he would, you know, he would do it. So they accepted government service. There's different versions. That's one of them. But they didn't want to be there. They didn't want to be there. They didn't want to be there. So they're, they have privileges because they're government officers. They sent a messenger to Lord Chaitanya because you didn't have, have postal carriers. They sent a messenger carrying a letter to Lord Chaitanya saying, please rescue us from this terrible situation. We want to be with you. Because they heard of Lord Chaitanya. Several letters, no reply. Finally, a very cryptic, puzzling reply came. And they understood what he meant. Become just like a wife who is attached to another man and will perform her worldly duties to her husband very nicely, so he doesn't suspect, but in her mind, she will always be thinking of the other man, waiting for the chance to meet him. They understood. Carry on with your duties. You don't want to be there. Carry on with your duties. And in your mind, internally, this is important, internally cultivate, anticipating, meeting, being with Krishna and being with Lord Chaitanya. And some time passed, and eventually Lord Chaitanya went to see them in Ramakeli. 
They didn't come to see him. He was responding to their appeal. Please deliver us from this terrible thing. Now, in a moment, we're going to take a look at a map of India. Jagannath Puri is where Lord Chaitanya was residing, is on the far eastern coast. Lord Chaitanya's plan was to go to Vrindavan, which is way over here, northwest. To get to, to Vrindavan, he went northeast to visit Rupa and Sanatan. And when he went, he went with thousands of followers. Thousands of followers. And Nawab saw these thousands of followers in this young sannyasi singing and dancing. And who is this person? No, is he, is he, a, is he a putting my kingdom and my ruling at risk? Because he's a mean guy. He could just try to snuff him out and all of his followers. Not a nice guy. So Sanatan Goswami said to the king, because he was asked, who is this? He's just, he's a mendicant. Don't worry about it. He's harmless. He's not, he's not going to give any difficulty to you. So for at least for the time being, he's the, 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 the Nawab, having confidence in Sanatan, because he's very smart and very capable, he, you know, step back a, a step or two. And when Lord Chaitanya saw them, Rupa and Sanatan, they were very ecstatic to, to see him, but he said, let's meet in a private place in the evening. And so that's what happened. In a village in a certain district of Bengal, that there's the two brothers with turbans on their heads, stretching out to touch the feet of Lord Chaitanya, and they had some conversation. Again, the, their wish was, take us out of this situation. But Lord Chaitanya was, they're, they're actually eternal associates, eternal associates in a certain difficult circumstance, so he's going to liberate them from that circumstance. From Chaitanya Charitamrita, he said, my dear, they had their names changed to match their government service in the Muslim government. My dear Dabir Khas, you two brothers are my old servants. My dear Sakra Malik, from this day, your names will be changed to Srila Rupa and Srila Sanatana. Now please abandon your humility for my heart is breaking to see you so humble. They they came with straw in their teeth and they're falling at his feet and it's expressing all kinds of humility. Help, please be merciful to us. Sanat at the parting of that meeting, Sanatana Goswami, this is very interesting. He made suggestion to Lord Chaitanya. Two, one, leave immediately. This king is a wild man. He can do anything at any time. Right now he's calm, but tomorrow he can be wild. So my advice is don't stay. We, You're our shelter. You came to be with us. My advice is don't stay because I fear, fear for your safety. The second is etiquette-wise, Going to Vrindavan with thousands of followers isn't the way to go. It's a holy place. You should go alone or at most with one person. That's how a sannyasi should enter the holy place. That was at night. The next morning, Lord Chaitanya, having considered what he said, concluded, yes. I'll go back to Puri, take all of my followers, the thousands of followers, deposit them in Puri, and go with just one servant to visit Vrindavan. So that's what he did. Meanwhile, so I, I think you're going to like this part. This is like a narrative. I'm going to show you a map, step by step by step, of 
where Lord Chaitanya went, and he went back to Puri, and then he went to Vrindavan. And now next, Rupa Goswami is going to, ahead of time, Rupa and his other brother Anupam, they're going to go meet Lord Chaitanya in Prayag. You're going to see it in a map shortly. So that left Sanatana Goswami behind. And Sanatana Goswami wasn't doing all of his duties because he wasn't really interested in his duties. He was interested in Srimad Bhagavatam. So he invited Brahmanas to come and discuss Srimad Bhagavatam together. And he told the Nawab, I'm not feeling well. I can't come to the office. Sorry, Charlie. And it went on and on. And so the king, Nawab, sent his royal physician, go check him out. And the royal physician came back, says he's well. So then this is a painting that Nawab came in person and confronted. What are you doing? What's your intention? And Sanatan said, I don't intend to engage in your prime minister anymore. It doesn't suit my nature. Now, his other two brothers are already gone. It's just him. And the Nawab was furious. And rather than, you know, he could have killed him, but instead he just put him in jail till he would maybe change his mind. So this is a photograph of the place where he put him in prison. Looks like a pretty fortified place. So Sanatan Goswami stayed in this prison of the Nawab for some time. And then very cleverly, he had been given 10,000 gold coins by Rupa Goswami and he bribed the jailer and said, I'll give you 6,000 gold coins if you release me. And the jailer said, no way. The Nawab will kill me. So what's 6,000 gold coins going to do if I'm dead? And Sanatana Goswami, being a prime minister, smart, practical, smart, suggested, here's what you can say to the Nawab, the king. Sanatan had to answer the call of nature. And I, I, he, so I let him go to the river and he jumped in with his iron chains on and he drowned. So there's your, your explanation. You, you didn't release me. I drowned myself in answering the call of nature. And in addition, I'll give you another 1,000 gold coins. Here's 7,000. He placed them in front of him so he could see 7,000 gold coins. And the jailer agreed. So he released him from the... the shackles around his wrist, and Sanatan Goswami was free. So Sanatan Goswami then wanted to go meet Lord Chaitanya. And he knew the plan was he was going to go back to Puri and then take more of a direct line. So Puri's down here, Ramakali is up here, and he's going to go to Vrindavan, so I'll try to catch up with him on the way to Vrindavan. So he passed over hills and tracts of land and he went to a place that was up on a top of a mountain and an innkeeper on the top of the mountain had an astrologer and the astrologer said, there's someone coming through here that has many valuables. Kill him and take his valuables. Innkeeper thought that was a very good idea. And so when the two, this is Lord Chaitanya had an assistant named Ishan, and the innkeeper treated them so nicely because his plan was to kill them at night. Being politically astute, Sanatana Goswami understood. He's buttering me up for some reason. He wants something. Ishan. Do you have any valuables with you? I have seven gold coins. (laughs) 
this is death knell. Give, give those seven gold coins immediately to the innkeeper and say, this is because of your kindness, of taking care of us nicely. Please take, please accept. And Ishan kept one gold coin. Instead of eight, he gave seven. So the innkeeper was very astonished. How did you know that I was going to kill you? And, you know, so let, let me see if I can help you get to your destination. He became... Now he had seven gold coins, and so he was, he was a happy man. I don't have to kill, and I got seven gold coins. Let me help you get to your destination. It's a nice exchange. Just a little description. So now here's that map I promised you. On the lower right side, along the eastern shore coast, is Jagannath Puri. And look where Vrindavan is. It's way up there to the left, up northwest. So to go to Vrindavan, he didn't go to Vrindavan. He went to Ramakeli. And going to Ramakeli, he went first to Shantipur, which is the place where Advaitacharya was. And he stayed there for some time with Advaitacharya. And then he went with his thousands of followers to Ramakeli. And there in Ramakeli, he met the two brothers, Rupa and Sanatan. See those circles? And then under the advice of Sanatan, don't go with these thousands of followers. Deposit your followers back in Puri. So he did that. He went back to Puri through Shantipur and went to Jagannath Puri. Meanwhile, he, Lord Chaitanya, took another path went through the Jari Khan forest, Varanasi, and Prayag. So now he's in Prayag, and now we're going to see the footsteps of the younger brother, Rupa. He goes to Vrindavan, he goes back to Prayag. Whoop! And here's Rupa Goswami. What Rupa Goswami did was, he, he had boatloads of gold coin. They were very wealthy. He, get, he in, in a very exemplary manner, he divided his wealth, one quarter for emergency, some of which was given to Sanatan. Um, one, one half went to his relatives, and now, whoops, here's those white footsteps where Lord Chaitanya had come back from Vindavan, and now in Prayag, Rupa and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met for 10 days. We'll hear about this tomorrow morning. But now you, I mean, I can show you the map again, unless you want me to. They met. Lord Chaitanya gave him spiritual instructions. He told him, he instructed him to write Bhakti Rasami to Sindhu. He said, you go to Vrindavan, and after some time you can come see me in Puri. And they, they departed one another. So now Lord Chaitanya went through Varanasi, and there goes Rupa to Vrindavan. He didn't stay long. He stayed a year, and then he went to Puri. So Lord Chaitanya is now in Varanasi, and look at this, that pink color. That's Sanatana Goswami, and Sanatana Goswami met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Varanasi. We're going to hear more about their meeting in Varanasi. They spent some time, Lord Chaitanya instructed him in some detail in Varanasi. And then Lord Chaitanya, when they departed, he went to, back to Jagannath Puri and he told Sanatan Goswami, you please go in, to Vrindavan. And while he's going to Vrindavan on the southern route, Rupa Goswami is going in a northern route. They didn't cross paths, but they, they were going in opposite directions. And there is Rupa Goswami, passed through Prayag again, Varanasi again, passed through Bengal, met with his relatives in Bengal, and went and met Lord Chaitanya in Puri. You get the chronology? Now notice that pink circle up there on the left. All this while, Sanatana Goswami for a year 
stayed in Vrindavan. And then after Rupa and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met together for quite some time in Puri, he left. He left to go visit his relatives in Bengal. And look at this. Here comes Sanatana Goswami heading for Puri. He passed through Jarikan Forest. We'll hear about that, passing through Jarikan Forest. And he met with Lord Chaitanya in Puri. But meanwhile, just days before Sanatana Goswami reached Puri, Sanat Rupa Goswami had left. They just missed one another twice, but then they met up again in Vrindavan and lived happily ever after <laughs> for some 40 years, something like that. So here's the map. And there's Jagannath Puri. There goes Sanatan Goswami. He goes to Shantipur. He goes to Ramakali. That, actually, that's Lord Chaitanya. And then back to Shantipur, back to Jagannath Puri. And now we're going to see Lord Chaitanya meeting with Sanatana Goswami in Varanasi. Now I'm on slide 61 of 123. And I don't know how we're going to finish everything. But I'll try. So in the course of Sanatana Goswami's travel, he, um, he visited the home of a relative. And his relative wanted him to stay. He, no, I'm, I'm going to go meet Lord Chaitanya. And then he just gave him a gift. You know, gave him a gift. People give people gifts. It was a nice chadar. In this painting it shows it's blue. In this painting it shows it's red. But it's an, an expensive little chadar. And Lord Chaitanya at that time was staying at the house of a brahmana named Chandrasekhar. And Lord Chaitanya embraced him. And Chandrasekhar was, look at his, who, what's going on here? There's such affection between these two. But he's pictured having a beard because he was in Muslim government service and hair. And he told him, you know, make yourself look like a gentleman, get a, get, get a shave and take your bath in the sacred river. So he went to the Ganges and he noticed that Lord Chaitanya was just glancing at his nice chudder, the upper garment, again and again and again. And he understood just by his glance. He didn't say anything, but he didn't approve it. I'm going in the direction of becoming a mendant again. I got a, I got a nice chatter, nice upper garment. So when he went to the Ganges, he saw an old Brahmin who had taken his bath and was laid his torn quilt out to dry in the sun. And he asked the, the, the mendicant, can I trade you this nice upper garment for your torn quilt? And the mendicant said, don't tease me, this isn't nice. So no, I'm not teasing. I'm I'm asking. I'm humbly requesting. Please let me exchange this nice upper garment for your torn quilt. So the mendicant agreed. When he came back with a torn quilt instead of the upper garment, that was very nice. Lord Chaitanya was very pleased, and he gave some instructions about devotion in detachment for a sannyasi specifically. And um, Srila Prabhupada expressed specifically that during this time that Lord Chaitanya spent with Sanatana Goswami in Varanasi, he gave him sannyas and sannyas attire. So he was his diksha guru and a sannyas guru and gave him sannyas attire. There's formalities in all of this. And he... Sanatana Goswami very humbly prostrated himself before Lord Chaitanya, clasped his feet with straw in his teeth, and asked these classic questions. And when you hear Srila Prabhupada's lectures, he says it over and over again, these two things. Who am I? 
And why do the threefold miseries always give me trouble? Kene Amaya, Jari Tapatrai. Who am I? Or what am I? And why do these threefold miseries always give me trouble? And the answer, or the response from Lord Chaitanya is found in Chaitanya Charitamrita. The whole dialogue is indicated or recorded in Sanatana Shiksha. Shiksha means instructions. So for quite some time, they were the two were together extensively, extensively, extensively. Lord Chaitanya trained him, instructed him, and then requested him to write those teachings in his literatures, which he did later. And according to Chaitanya Charitamrita, there were four essential instructions. Here are the four essential instructions. For two for the entire two months they were together. Two months having tutorial by Lord Chaitanya. O Sanatana, you should broadcast the revealed scriptures on devotional service and excavate the lost places of pilgrimage in the district of Mathura. There's two. Establish devotional service to Lord Krishna and Radharani in Vrindavan. You should also compile bhakti scriptures and preach the bhakti cult from Vrindavan. There's his four primary instructions, which became his life and soul. And so from there, Sanatana Goswami went to Vrindavan. He remained there for one year, after which time he went to Jagannath Puri. And his travels to Jagannath Puri, he knew that Lord Chaitanya had traveled through the Jarikhand forest. And when he traveled through the Jarikhand forest, he made a mistake. He took water from a place he shouldn't have taken water. And as a result, his body became afflicted with a a, a very nasty disease, a skin disease, where his body had oozing sores all over his body, the kind that were yucky and smelly and liquidy, sores all over his body. And when he came to Puri, Lord Chaitanya wanted to embrace him. And here is Lord Chaitanya wanting to embrace him and Sanatan Goswami trying to run the other way. In the background is Haridas watching all this. And he would embrace him anyway. Please don't touch me. Please don't touch me. Lord Chaitanya cured his disease. It's a very interesting detail of how that happened. Very interesting detail of how that happened. But it happened. He cured him by his embrace. And then poof, miracle cure. But before that, it was, don't touch me, don't touch me. And Lord Chaitanya would go chasing after him and embrace him. Sanatana Goswami remained in Puri for one year. So it was two months and then one year of daily instructions and training by Lord Chaitanya. One day, Lord Chaitanya was residing in a place where to reach where Lord Chaitanya was. He was visiting um, Gadadhar Pandit by the... Anyway, anyway. Lord Chaitanya sent a messenger to Sanatana Goswami to where he was staying with Haridas. Ask Sanatana Goswami to come see me. So the direct line to go from where Sanatana Goswami was to where Lord Chaitanya was meant going right past the temple. Instead of going right past the temple, he went down by the sea. And at the sea, midday in Puri, it's burning hot. Burning hot, literally. His feet got blisters from the burning heat. And when Chaitanya saw him, Sanatan, what took you so long? How, what path did you come to come by? Come here. I went by the sea. But by the sea, it's too hot. Let me see the bottom of your feet. Oh, it's blistered. Why did you do that? Because my body has all these sores. And as I'm passing through the temple, 
and in front of the temple, the priests are coming and going, and their body might touch my body. I'd contaminate them, this yucky, smelly, oozing, pussy body. So I didn't want that t- offense, so I went by the way of the sea. To avoid offense. And so Natan Goswami said, you're, you're, you're an, extra- an exceptional person. Hardship for you is nothing. Offense, avoiding offense to you is everything. You have perfect behavior and conduct. There's some details and details. Because of time, I'm not going to go into all those details. Sanatana Goswami thought, because of this yucky, smelly body, let me, when it comes time for Rathiyatra, Rathiyatra is a big festival, like giant chariot, wheels. I'll see the deity of Lord Jagannath and I'll throw my body before the chariot get crushed and I'll give up my body. He didn't say anything, he just had that thought. And Lord Chaitanya, not having said anything, said, you can't do that. He was showing he is omniscient. I know your thoughts. You can't do that. If giving up your body is all that needs to be done to, to get spiritual liberation, we'd all do it. But that's not how you get liberation. You can't do it. I forbid you. You've given your body to me in my service. I have plans for it. You can't do it. So now he's in anxiety. He's got this smelly, pussy, yucky body, and Lord Chaitanya wants to embrace him. And so he, Sanatana Goswami, asked a junior devotee who was very dear to Lord Chaitanya what to do, what to do. He said, stay for Rathiyatra, and then after, after Rathiyatra, go back to Vrindavan. When Lord Chaitanya came to know that, he said, who is this Jagatananda? He's your He's a little boy. He has no business. I'm going to scold him like anything. He has no business. I didn't tell you to go back to Vrindavan. How is he giving you some instruction to go back to Vrindavan? So he can't stay and he can't go. He can't give up his body. What to do, what to do, what to do. He's in big anxiety. He's got the smelly, yucky, smelly stuff on his body. Mochitanya wants to embrace him all the time. So one fine day, Lord Chaitanya caught him and warmly embraced him, and poof, the sores were gone. Haridas Thakur saw the whole thing. Lord Chaitanya left. He said, all of this, all of this thing, if you're getting these sores in your body, was Lord Chaitanya's arrangement to bring you to a complete place of complete dependence on his mercy. And then he took it away, took the problem away. You're the greatest recipient of Lord Chaitanya's mercy. And Sanatana Goswami, being very humble, said, no, no, no. You are the greatest recipient of Lord Chaitanya's mercy because you have the capacity to take the teaching that Lord Chaitanya came to give, the chanting of the Holy Name, and display it perfectly, at the same time you have perfect character. So you're the best. You speak his message and you exhibit his message. You're the best recipient of Lord Chaitanya's mercy. So when he got back to Vrindavan, we're going trying to go slide 71 of 123. Okay. But let's go back to Krishna. We know who is Krishna. Krishna had a son. He had a number of sons. One of his sons had a son. And Vajranabha was one of his grandsons, or great-grandson. So in honor of his great-grandfather, he established principal deities of Krishna in Vrindavan. Here's the four deities. I'll let you take a look. Because of time, I'm not going to read the list. But you can see there are four principal deities in Vrindavan, Govardhan, and Gokula, those are parts of Vrindavan. And then two deities, in addition to those four, are having the name Nath, Nathaji, and Gopinath. 
And then there are two Gopals. And one of those two Gopals was worshipped by Sanatan Goswami. That's why bringing this up. And that deity of Mud and Mohan was worshipped by, which was worshipped by Sanatan Goswami, later got shifted to Jaipur. We'll tell that history. I I think I'm in anxiety about time. The deity was moved to Jaipur for safety, and then later the deity went to to Karoli. We'll tell that story. Here's from the same book, Bhakti Ratnakar, that I mentioned. Madan Gopal has been, this is the deity made by Bajranaba from the same text, Bhakti Ratnakar, has been famous as Madan Mohan in the world. Madan Gopal also exists within Vrindavan. Gopal lives eternally as a boy. Govinda Dave exists as a matured youth, and Gopinath is the most beautiful. Gopal, little boy, is of a calm but proud disposition. Govinda is calm and broad hearted, and Gopinath is of a calm whoops, and gentle disposition. Gopal is lion neck, Govinda stands in a threefold bending posture, and Gopinath is a flirt with a broad chest. This is a quote from Bhakti Ratnakar. And the deity that was established thousands of years before had been lost. And there's the first of these principal deities of Vajranav that was found. It was found underneath this particular tree that was <clears throat> identified by Advaita Acharya. And <clears throat> The deity that was identified by Advaita Acharya ended up being worshipped or being in the care of a um, Mathura Brahmin named Purushottam Chaube. This is that same tree under which Advaita Acharya, before Lord Chaitanya appeared, was visiting Vrindavan and he found this deity. Now there's details because of time I'm not going to be able to go into. It's a very nice description. But there was a Brahmana in Mathura by the name Chobe, Purushottam Chobe, and this deity was worshipped by him. There's details and details. But one time Sanatan Goswami was visiting the Chobe's home, and um, there's different versions, but he saw the deity and he was very attracted to the deity. And in that in that evening, the deity appeared in Lord in Sanatan Goswami's dream and Chobe's dream. I want to be worshipped by that sadhu. So the next day, Sanatan Goswami came, and Chobe said, "Yes, I had the same dream. So you take the deity." It's said that Lord Chaitanya, excuse me, Sanatan Goswami had this conversation with the deity. Look, I'm a mendicant, and I don't have much. So I, I can only offer you bhati, I already described, flour, water, mix, make a ball, put it in the fire, peel off the burnt part, and give that to you. That's all I have. And don't ask for more. It's okay, it's okay. I want to be worshipped by you. After some time, there was a dream in which there was a request for salt. Can I get some salt along with this bhati? <laughs> And Sanatana Goswami said, you, you have to go back to the Chobe's home because I, I don't have these things. What happened the next day, again, there's different versions, but there was a, a merchant ship, a cargo ship kind of ship that was traveling along the Jamuna River and the merchant, his name was Krishna Das Kapoor, and um, his boat that was carrying as cargo salt got stuck on a sandbar. And a little cowherd boy went and told the ship merchant, 
you can get freed from this sandbar. You just go on top of that hill, that Dwadasha Adichatila, you'll find a sadhu and he'll, he'll, he'll help you. So Kapoor, Krishna Das Kapoor, went up on the hill, asked Sanatana Goswami what to do about the, do, the, about the boat. He said, see this deity, mud and gopal, pray to the deity, everything will be nice. And sure enough, a heavy rain came down and the boat was able to become free and he went to the, the, the marketplace and sold all his salt. So now he understood that merchant understood it's the mercy of that deity. So he came back and he pledged to Sanatana Goswami, I'll build you a temple for your deity. And he built the temple. And that's the temple that he built. Whoops. That's the temple that he built. And after some time, Rupa, Sanatana Goswami had changed the name from Madan Gopal to Madan Mohan. And that's, that's just a painting. Here's a photograph of the place. There's steps leading up on top of this hill. On top of the hill, there's a place where he kept the deity, he didn't have a, a temple for the deity pr prior to that, it was just hanging on a tree. And over to the side, there's a well. And in Vrindavan, it's hard to get sweet water, but in this particular well, it was sweet water because most of the, salt, the, the well water is salty. But this particular well for Mud and Mohan was sweet. Very nice place. Special place, special place. Here's an aerial photograph. There's the back side of the temple. And the front side of the temple is where the deity was. And here's another aerial photograph of the place. And if you go down the steps, there's the steps leading up to the temple. Now this is celebrated deity, Madan Mohan, worshipped by Sanatana Goswami. And the next generation after him was the person who was going to write the biography about Lord Chaitanya. His name was Krishna Das Kaviraj. And he went here and there to get, ask everyone's blessings to write. And he went to the Madan Mohan deity for blessings and a garland fell. As he was paying his prayers to the deity and used the painting and showing the Pujari gave the garland from Madan Mohan as confirmation. Yes. Please write this book. So the author writes in his book, Actually, Chaitanya Charitamrita is not my writing, but the dictation of Madan Mohan. My writing is like the re repetition of a parrot. <clears throat> as a wooden doll is made to dance by a magician, I write as Madan Gopal orders me to do so. Madan Gopal, worshipped by Sanatana Goswami, played a very important role in the composition of the life of Lord Chaitanya and the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Glory to the all-merciful Radha and Madan Mohan. I am lame and ill-advised, and yet my directors, they are my directors, and their lotus feet are everything to me. The mercy of Lord Nityananda showed me Sri Madan Mohan and gave me Sri Madan Mohan as my Lord and Master. I accept as my family deity Madan Mohan. So here's a photograph of the deity of Madan Mohan with on one side, on Madan's left side, is Radha, and on Madan Mohan's right side is Lalita. And we're on slide 87, 123. What happened was that back in Orissa, there was a king of Orissa in Puri, was his headquarters, or the, you know, the place. So he, Purushottam Jena, he wanted to serve the deities of the Goswamis. So there was Mud and Mohan, and there was Govindaji, and they didn't have deities of Radha. 
So he arranged a deity of Radha for each one of them. However, the Pujari of Madan Mohan had a dream. The very day before the deities were to be installed in his dream, Radha appeared and said, no, no, no. Both deities are meant for, for Madan Mohan. On this side is Lalita, and on that side is Radha. So the whole plan was changed. The deity installation took place the next day, and Radha on one side and Lalita on the next side. That's the history behind these two deities. Radha, Madan Mohan, and Lalita by their side. Now, for the safety of the deity, the de all the deities of the Goswamis in, in Vrindavan at one point had to be moved because they were at risk. There was a, there was a, a madman Muslim ruler who wanted to smash the temples and smash the deities. So to protect the deities, the deities were moved from Vrindavan to Jaipur, some distance away. So the original deities went to Jaipur. Some time passed. And the king of Jaipur had a daughter. And an arrangement was being suggested for his daughter to marry a prince in a nearby place named Karoli. And the daughter said, okay, on one condition. I'm too much attached to Mud and Moani has to come with me. And it was a big hubbub and there's a big procession and the deity of Mud and Mohan went from Jaipur to Crowley because the girl was too much attached to Mud and Mohan. And there's a reason why. The deity of Mud and Mohan is very, very, very personal. Here's a close this is a painting. Here's a photograph of the deity, very rare. Very nice deity, very personal. And so that deity is now being worshipped in Karoli. And if you've ever been, maybe one day you'll go to Karoli. If you're very fortunate, you'll go to Karoli. And what happens when the worship, the time for worship takes place, it's very similar to at Govindaji Temple. The room packs up. And the kirtan starts before the deity curtain opens. And the room is just filled with such devotion. It's just breathtaking. And then the curtain opens. And they have their different songs that they sing. And it's, it, 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 The deity is the center of life in that city of Karoli. Very special, merciful deity. Here's a little photograph of one of the days that the deity is dressed in the way that you see. There's Radharani on the right, and she has a sword. Looks like a sword. It's Krishna's flute. What happened, it's commemorating a pastime. The pastime goes like this. After Rasalila one time, Krishna was tired. So Krishna took rest, and as he was taking rest, the gopis came and stole Krishna's flute and crown. And when he woke up, he noticed his fruit and, flute and crown were missing. And the, the gopis all laughed. They gave it to Radharani. So he had to go to Radharani and beg for his flute and his crown back. She gave on one condition. You have to be my guard and stand outside the door and guard the door. And then I'll give you your flute back. So over on the Krishna side, there he's got a shield and a sword and weapons for guarding Radharani's door. And over on Radharani's side, she has Krishna's stick for, con for, controlling, the elef the, for controlling the cows and the flute tucked in her waistband. And there's the pastime. The gopis stealing Krishna's flute and crown. In Vrindavan town, this is the Mud and Mohan temple, Mud and Mohan, the replacement deities. Now, I don't know where to end.
But this is one of the Bhajan Kutir places of Sanatana Goswami. It's by the side of uh, Shamakund. There's the deities along with his place of Bhajan. And a particular pastime occurred in this location. The particular pastime was that um, Rupa Goswami had written a, um, a poem or some writing that was describing, in the very beginning part, it was describing the movements of Srimati Radharani as she was walking, and she had a long braid down her back, and her braid was moving like a serpent. And when he, when he read, because Rupa Goswami had as Sanatana Goswami as his elder brother, so he requested Sanat Goswami, please read this writing and see if you see some errors. There are no errors. But he didn't like that description of Radharani's braid looking like a serpent swaying. He didn't say anything. Later, on the back side of where his Bhajan Kutir was and his little deity of Madan Mohan by the side of Shamakund, he was going to take his bath in Shamakund, but as he was going, on the back side you can see there's a place where the, the gopis would engage in their bathing. It's called Manasa Pavangat. Manasa Pavangat. So he, there, Sanatana Goswami saw some young girls, and they were taking water from Manasa Pavangat. And as they turned, one of the girls, it looked like there was a serpent climbing up her back. So he called out, Look out! There's a serpent climbing up your back. And the girl turned, astonished to hear Sanatana Goswami calling out like this. And all of a sudden, all the girls just disappeared. Poof. Poof. So then he understood this was Radharani. And Radharani was giving me the message that what Rupa Goswami writ had written was very nice. So later Rupa Goswami came to, said, to ask, how did you like this writing? He said, I especially like the part about Radharani's praise. It's really good. Transcendental loving exchange. Now there's another very nice pastime And it, it's also mentioned in Bhakti Ratnakar. And I, I, I'll just say the pastime. One time, Rupa Goswami was very absorbed in chanting. So absorbed in chanting that a very sweet pastime of Radha and Krishna was taking place. We're going to see it tomorrow. Maybe I'll skip it and go to it tomorrow. But as, as he was chanting and chanting and chanting, the gopis were, were the gopis, or the assistants of Radharani for her pleasure. They were combing her hair and brushing her hair. And Krishna saw that. So he said, shh. And he took the brush. And he started brushing Radharani's hair with a brush. And Radharani commented, oh, you're doing such a nice job. Let me see. So she got a mirror and looked in the mirror and she saw that it was Krishna brushing her hair. And when, Krishna, when Radha saw that it was Krishna brushing her hair, she started laughing and the gopis started laughing. And Rupa Manjari, who was in that pastime also, started laughing. It was a very joyful event. And as he was laughing inside in his meditation, his body was also laughing. And as he was laughing, a very old 
semi-crippled mendicant was walking by, and the mendicant saw he was laughing, and he thought he was laughing at me because I can't walk properly. And his mind became disturbed. So he went to his elder brother and Sanatan and said, this just happened, and your brother is so elevated. Why was he laughing at me? I can't understand it. It's very disturbing. And Sanatan Goswami said, I'll look into it. I'll get back to you. Later that day, Rupa Goswami came to his brother, said, I was engaged in this meditation, and this nice pastime happened, and all of a sudden, my meditation broke. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get back into that meditation. Please explain. He said, oh, here's what happened. The Brahmin thought you had offended him by laughing at him because he couldn't walk properly. And because although you didn't offend him, he thought you had offended him, your meditation broke. So here's what you do. Go find the Brahmin and explain to him what happened and beg for his forgiveness. And everything will be nice. So it's exactly what Rupa did. And when Rupa told the, the Brahmin what happened, the Brahmin went, oh no, you're not the offender, I'm the offender. I was thinking that you did something bad like this, but that's not possible for you. And please forgive me, please forgive me. And they embraced and everything was nice. So this is all described in Bhakti Ratnakar in much more detail. And here's the conclusion. Oh, my brothers and sisters, please be very careful in dealing with Vaishnavas. Give them your very breath so they will forgive your offenses. Be careful. Do not see Vaishnavas' faults. Always praise the Vaishnavas. The ancient great devotees say, no one understands the way of Vaishnavas, though through his dear devotees, Lord Chaitanya, truth to us. Hold the devotee's lotus feet to your head and dive into the nectar of pure devotional service. I want to end, but I have another 20 slides. <laughs> Some of you recognize Dina Bundle. Dinabanduki Dai. So he's our Bridge Basi Iskan devotee. And here he is standing in front of the Bhajan Kutir of Sanatan Goswami at Pavan Sarovar. Now there's some history of how this Bhajan Kutir came to be. Krishna arranged for it to be built. Sanatan Goswami, there's a long description in Bhakti, long description in Bhakti Ratnakar of his position in relation to all of Vrindavan. He was like the village elder, and he was always on the move, as sannyasis are often on the move, and he would go from village to village, and when he left a village, they would cry, and when he came to the next village, they would receive him, and it was like, it was, he was a, not just like a political celebrity or rock star or something, he was the life and soul of these people because they all loved him. And he sat and listened to all their everything and gave guidance and did everything and everything. He was, he was their everything, like their father. And he, for days he would not eat or sleep, just be with them taking, taking care of all their everything. So one of the places he went where there was, he, for solitude, he went to a place near the bottom of Nandagram at a place that's Pavansarovar, the place where Nanda Maharaj and Krishna would take their bath each morning. And he went to a place where it was just a grove of trees and it was real quiet and he could just be alone. However, one day, a little cowherd boy, who was Krishna, came and said, who are you? What are you doing here? No one knew that you were here. I saw you when I was taking care of my cows. I brought some milk for you. Please take this milk. Because in our village, no one goes hungry. Please accept. So immediately he accepted. He had been fasting for days. And as he was drinking the milk, he is Krishna's milk. <laughs> he felt ecstasy. And then he understood this was Krishna bringing me milk. 
and then poof, Krishna disappeared. This is in Bhakti Ratnakar. Then Krishna went in disguise as a coward boy and told the village people, there's a sadhu living in this grove of trees, build him a cottage, build him a, a place where he can do his chanting. And so they did, and that became what you see behind you. Now, in course of time, it became a lot more spiffy. And here's what it looked like from above. There's Dina Bandhu paying his obeisances. Here's inside, inside those painted blue metal doors. There's what's now the Bhajan Kutir place. Here's on the right side is what it looked like inside. And that there, I just gave you a little description of his, his activities in Vrindavan. It's just, you know, he lived there for 40 years and he had a few places, three, four places where he had a cottage, a Bhajan Kutir place. And otherwise, he was always on the move going from village to village to village. There's a celebrated story that you all know. Well, most of you know, except our newer people. This is Rupa Goswami writing, and he's writing underneath a tree, and that tree is a particular kind of tree called the Kadamba tree. As, as he was writing and writing and writing, he was thinking, today is my brother's birthday. I'm a mendicant, I don't have much, but if I could make some gift for my brother, that would be very nice. He didn't say anything, he just was thinking in that way. Down the path came a young village girl who said, Today there was a wedding in our village and I came to bring to you some ingredients that you can make some nice sweet rice for your brother. They requested this, so please accept. So Rupa made some sweet rice for his brother. He took it to his brother who was not so far away at that Bhajan Kutir place in Pavan Sarovar and he started drinking. And as he started drinking, where does he get the ingredients? This I've had Mahaprasadam and Puri and Mahaprasadam in this place, that place, but this is out of this world. Where does he get the ingredients? And Rupa Goswami told the story. This young girl came, said there's a wedding in our, in our village, and Sanatana Goswami said, wait a minute. I know all the weddings and all the marriages and all the, the, the births and all that stuff, and there's no, there's no wedding. I know, this is Srimati Radharani, and you're engaging me in taking service from Radharani when we're meant to serve Radharani? And he started to cry. And he set the sweet rice down. But after some time, he picked it up again and shared the sweet rice with Rupa Goswami. Nice story, there's different versions of that nice story. Sanatana Goswami has, there's so many nice things about him. Here's one nice thing. And most of us in the room know the story. There's different versions of the story. One mendicant, Grahasta, very poor. I don't have the means to maintain my family. I heard that Sanatana Goswami has a touchstone. And Sanatana Goswami is known to be very charitable. So I think I'll try, I'll ask him for charity. Will he, will he give me the touchstone? And so the mendicant went to see him. And sure enough, Sanatana Goswami said, yes, I have a touchstone. Can I have it in charity from you? Yes. It's over there in the rubbish pile. So he found the touchstone. And he was very enthusiastic. Now I can maintain my family. So we went back to his home. He had an iron pot. He touched the touchstone to the iron pot. He turned it to gold. Fantastic. And whatever metal he could find, it became gold, it became gold. But he was a Brahmin mendicant. So he put two, tick, two and two together and came up with four. If he had it in the, in the garbage, that means he has something more valuable. Maybe he'll give that to me instead of just a touchstone, something more valuable. So he went back. You have something more valuable? Oh, something far more valuable. Can I get that from you in charity? He said, sure. 
on one condition. What's that? Throw the touchstone into the river. The Brahmin looked at the touchstone, he looked at Sanatan, he looked at the touchstone, looked at Sanatan, and he threw the touchstone in the river. And Sanatan Goswami gave him the holy name, which is far more valuable than gold or anything of material value, is that which is of the greatest spiritual value. And he gave him teachings on the chanting of the holy name. Another nice story, I'll try to do it quickly. Jagatananda Pandit was visiting Sanatan Goswami in Vrindavan one time, and he was cooking. He was a very good cook. And as he was cooking, he noticed that Sanatan Goswami had a turban. And he asked, where would you get the turban? And Sanatan Goswami innocently said, it was a gift from his super excellent and this circumstance of my wearing this turban was just to invoke that, to show to me and to the world how much love you have for Lord Chaitanya. I'll never wear this turban again. I'll give it away in, in, in charity to somebody. Don't worry. That is to say, Sanatana Goswami was honoring even a junior to him because of his love and devotion for Lord Chaitanya. Because he was very poor, Sanatan Goswami didn't have the means to do things, so sometimes it's said he would stay up in the wee hours of the morning to sleep two or three hours at night, and using leaves as the light, he would do his writing in those circumstances. I think I'm going to end. There's many nice more images. Well, here's this Bhakti Ratnakar image where Krishna is combing Radharani's hair and she's seeing. Krishna in her, in the mirror. This is one of the Bhajan Kutir places he had, which is right next to Manasi Ganga. For those of you who know Govardhan Hill, it's in the middle of Govardhan Hill, more or less. And where there's water, there's usually mosquitoes during a certain season. And so during that season when there was mosquitoes, Sanatan Goswami was being bothered by the mosquitoes. This is what's inside. This is the outside. And when you open that little painted door, that's what's inside. It's Sanatan Goswami who was chanting. Just to the side of Sanatan Goswami's Bhajan Kutir is this place where it's a deities of Lord Shiva. And that central deity of the five uh, at night they decorate the deity sometimes like this, sometimes like this. And when there's a mosquito season, the mosquitoes were bothering Sanatana Goswami. He decided, I think I should just leave here because he would travel from place to place. So Lord Shiva came as a mendicant and said, please don't leave, please don't leave. I'll make the mosquitoes go away. Try, just stay one more day. He didn't say anything to anybody, he was just thinking. So Lord Shiva made the mosquitoes go away. And it's said to this very day, even during mosquito seasons, mosquitoes don't come. Almost done. He, he lived, as we saw, a little over 70 years. When he got older, it was difficult for him, but he was dedicated. He would circumambulate around Govardhan Hill every day. It was difficult. So one day Krishna came and said, Sanatan, you're, you don't need to do this anymore. I'll make this arrangement for you. See this rock or the shila of, of Govardhan Hill? I'll put my footprint in the shila and a calf print and my walking stick and you can just go around this seven times and it's as good as going around Govardhan Hill. So that's what he did. And in this very place, this Bhajan Kutir place by Manasi Ganga, that's where he gave up his body. On the background, you can see Govardhan Hill. And everything stopped because he was such a revered father, loving father. And they, they took his body in procession to the Mud and Mohan temple. And it's been through different 
changes over the years of the architecture, but this is the place behind the backside of Madan Mohan Temple, where his samadhi is. This is another year where it's in disrepair. Here is where it's nicely painted. Here's the samadhi inside. And the Shalagram Shila, the Govardhan Shila, is now on the altar in Jiva Goswami's temple. Because Jiva Goswami was alive in, during Sanatana Goswami's departure, because he was his nephew. And Jiva Goswami was so good at taking care of deities that they placed the, the Shila there. And to this day, it's still in front of the main altar. And that's it for running fast at the very end <laughs> to allow you to go on, do tomorrow's duties or tonight's duties or whatever it is you ought to do. Sorry for taking so long. But part of it had to do with helping our newer guests get a little bit of an understanding of You, and you're still here. You, your friend got a little restless. Her body is uncomfortable. Okay. Okay. Well, it'll get, it'll get cooler tomorrow. I heard the forecast. So any discussion? It's a lot of conversation before the discussion. Oh, anything. Okay. Uh, uh, earlier, you um, were describing that uh, Ramananda Roy was in awe at Sanatana Goswami's level of renunciation. Yes. But you said that there was an exchange that took place. What was that encounter? Or? Where, where Ramananda Roy was observing Sanatana Goswami's behavior? That's what you're asking? Oh, okay. Oh, you mean over a period of time? He was, or was there a no, particular there, there, exchange? Because it, it, my recollection, you can help. You can help me because my my memory is like a sieve. But it, there, there was a particular exchange during the time that Sanatana Goswami was there in Puri. Ramananda Roy was observing, and he observed a particular, you know, humility and renunciation. And he was remarking to Lord Chaitanya that the character of Sanatana Goswami is amazing. Do you remember the particular? Huh? Yes, I do, but not so much details. Okay, well, whatever you can add. No, that's good. What? Okay. It was a particular event. I mean, overall, he saw because Ramananda Roy is Ramananda Roy. He un he understood the character, but then the particular event, which I don't recall. And he remarked to Lord Chaitanya, and Lord Chaitanya made the comment that he made. These two brothers, they have these three characteristics, and Sanatana Goswami has these three characteristics. They're very special persons. Yeah. Yes? When they travel from one place to another, are they just walking? Yes, barefoot. Through the forest. No shoes, barefoot, no rickshaw. I have a question, Maharaj. Okay, let's hear. Srila Prabhupada writes in the purport, as you mentioned very nicely, in fifth chapter Adilila, two or three text. If one is interested, to understand Bhagavan, Bhakti, and Bhakta, yeah. must read Sanatan Goswami Paz Brihad. Yes. Then why we are not studying in Ishkan Brihad Bhagavatam Mita more than Bhagavatam? Because that's the three things we are looking for, isn't it? Well, there's, there's multiple answers to that question. One of them is, we emphasize Bhagavad Gita, then the graduates study 
Srimad Bhagavatam. And for those that are a little conversant in the Bhagavatam, then to begin studying Brihad Bhagavatamrita becomes approachable and accessible. But it's no, it, it's more refined and there's more detail. And if one doesn't understand Bhagavad Gita and at least preliminaries of Bhagavatam, Brihad Bhagavatamrita is going to be a big puzzle. And that's my assessment. And, and therefore, you know, in devotee circles, one should be eager to understand ABC before composition and higher math and higher studies. But, you know, but one who has such an interest, go for it at the right time. Makes sense. Yes, sure. Arjusha Maharaj, thank you for coming to Alechua. Um, I had a question about Sanatan Goswami's uh, trip when he got the sores yeah. and was, you know, trying to give up his body. And it's a bit of a vague question, but whenever I hear that pastime, I always get reminded of how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu responds to him by saying that it's not it's not your body yeah. for you to give up. But you you know, surrendered to me. Yeah. That means your body, that body now belongs to me. <clears throat> you can't destroy my property without my permission. Are you talking about him? His body no. belongs to him? No, no, no. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya said to Sanatan Goswami, Lord Chaitanya said to Sanatan Goswami, you've surrendered to me. That means your that body is now my body. And so you can't destroy my property. It's my, it's my property. I have plans with my property. You can't destroy it. And, and, you can't get liberation just by tossing your body under the wheels of a chariot. Sorry. If it was so easy, we'd all be doing that. But that's not how it, liberation comes. So I forbid you. Yeah, like you said, with the uh, uh, like he has plans for Sanatana Goswami or for any individual. Uh, it's sometimes hard to see those plans with, well, the, you, yeah, you know, with yeah. the dualities of life and especially yeah. in the downsides. Yeah. <laughs> so like I said, it's a bit of a big question, but how do you... You know, how do you see that in relation to what's How do you understand your, the plan that Lord Chaitanya has for you? That's your question? Yeah. That's your question? More or less, yeah. More or less? That's a good question. But it takes a lot of purification. But it, it also takes some, some ABC faith that there's a purpose awaiting for me to be fulfilled. I don't yet know what that purpose is. I have an idea, and it's a directional kind of idea, but not a detailed kind of idea. Now, what? Just hang on. I see you. You got the microphone. You're next. Okay? Parking lot, please. One of the thing. One of the books I make reference to regularly is a book by Viktor Frankl called *Man's Search for Meaning*. You've heard that title before. Man's search for meaning. The, the background is, he was a Jewish man in a Nazi concentration camp during World War II, and he survived. And after the war, he wrote a book, because in his mind he was writing the book when he was in the concentration camp. The title is Man's Search for Meaning. And one of the statements he makes is the one I just made. It goes something like this. There's like 10, 15 of them. You can find it on the internet. Mr. Google knows all these very easily. <laughs> what man needs is not a tensionless state where the, the difficulties of life go away. Rather, what man needs is a sense of purpose or mission awaiting for him to be fulfilled. Because when you says like Pramdrishva Navartate, when you have a purpose that's awaiting for you to be fulfilled, you're going there. And while going there, there can be good times and bad times, good fortune, ill fortune. It doesn't de detract you from that mission. So now, for you, a mission could be awaken, oh, you put it in simple language, 
And then it gets more detailed and more detailed as you mature. Let me become knowledgeable in, in the, the teachings that come from Krishna, the teaching of how to surrender to Krishna, the how-to part. Lord Chaitanya's teachings teach us how to. And, and let, me, let me come not just information-wise, but immersed in, in the, at the heart level, immersed in a life that's like that. And that's a life's mission. Let's take, you know, narrow it down a little bit. Attentive and absorbed chanting of the holy name. There's a life's mission. And from that comes the rest. From that comes purification, and purification comes removal of coverings and awakening of reality. And as reality awakens, then the answer to that question, what's my mission, becomes revealed. But supposing, you're, supposing the covering is really thick and someone hits you on the head with a magic wand and says, this is your mission, it's going to bounce. I see your hand. Just hang on. So take it in steps. It's like, you know, it's like a GPS. I like that. It's, you know, what's the destination? Krishna Prema, that's your mission. Uh, how do I do that? In steps, we you know to get from if you get from the Orlando airport to the expressway, we had to go west to Tampa. I said where are we going to Tampa? Because it gets you to the expressway that goes north and south, and then we you know. But we knew what the destination was, Alachua. Okay, you're on. You got the microphone. We're, we're all ears. Um, did, when they walked everywhere, did they take stops? I can't hear you. You're mumbling. Um, when they went um, walking to places, did they take stops or did they go nonstop? What did he say? When they walked from one place to another place, did they stop over somewhere? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh yeah, they, they 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 took a nap on the way. <laughs> Some refreshments too, not too much though. Is that all right? Of course they stopped. Of course. Yes, forgot me. Button, magic button. Um, uh, Swayam Bhagavan Keshava Swami, he said, the best alarm clock is having a purpose. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So, Lord Chaitanya was there and uh, Sanatan Goswami was in prison. Uh, and in the other case where he was attacked, Lord Chaitanya was very angry. Um, so, how do I see? Is like a plan of Krishna where he know that uh, when Sanatan Goswami was in prison, uh, Lord Chaitanya instructed to just continue, like no, there was he, no reaction. He, the, in, he, the in prison came later. Okay. First, he's in the government seat. And then Lord Chaitanya wrote, be patient, okay. internally cultivate, awaiting being with your beloved while you do your duties nicely. Okay. That was why he, not when he was in jail. Okay? okay? Yeah, but then... When Lord Chaitanya, of course, might have found out about... Well, he's omniscient. He, he, there's nothing he doesn't know. He knows okay. everything. Yeah. So, 
So why didn't he come to open up the jail? Yeah, yes. Is that your question? <laughs> He gave him the intelligence from within instead. Okay. He, he can, he can, he, there's no cookie cutter way for, for Lord Chaitanya or, or Krishna. They can do this, that, or the other thing, or the other thing, and there's no, there's no limitation. He was protected, even he was in jail. And to get out of jail, he got out of jail with the intelligence, how to get out of jail. Thank you, Mom. Yes, in the back. I was just thinking, didn't he also, he appealed to the jailer's uh, faith in Islam by saying something like in the Quran, it says that it's a blessing yes. to relieve someone, for release someone from bondage. Yes, uh, yes. That's a nice he detail. He was so very clever. Very, very clever. And he knew, it, you know, he knew Islam, he's not... He was knowledgeable. He spoke he, Persian and Arabic and everything. Yeah, yeah. The Mahabharata can lie? Or? No, he didn't lie. It's it's true. <laughs> it is. Yeah, I mean, he didn't lie. Time. It wasn't a lie. And your religion, it's it's it, there's merit that goes to a person who frees one from bondage. It's not a lie. It's the the application of a principle is a little tricky, but it's not a lie. Anyway. Yes, Sri Vindavan. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please uh, obeisances. I was just thinking about uh, similarly, like you know, La Sanatan Goswami had those boils on his body for a long time. Long time. And Lord Chaitanya is coming and visiting him. I kind of remember from Chaitanya Bhagavat, there was an underlying. There's an underlying reason. Can you please? Oh yeah, I mean, Hari Das Thakur said he arranged for that disease of your body. Why? He knows the answer. He wanted to bring him to the place of having no other shelter but one place of shelter. Lord Chaitanya's mercy. You know, he's intelligent. He could this and that and the other and the other and the other. He cut off all the doorways. There was only one thing, Lord Chaitanya's mercy. Lord Chaitanya's mercy. And boom. Yeah. It was love. You know, it, you know t to amplify the love, this inconvenience was there, but the purpose was amplification of his love. There we go. Should the Prabhupada keep? Yeah. Uh -huh.